Hello, my name is John Daniels, and I'm going to give you a brief tour of ASI's DI SPIM system as used for fluorescence microscopy. The DI SPIM stands for Dual Inverted Selective Plane Illumination Microscopy. The dual part means that we're taking view, two different views. Inverted means that it's mounted on top of an inverted scope, and then the selective plane illumination is uh, what's also known as light sheet microscopy, where we only illuminate one plane of the sample at a time. So uh, this is mounted on an inverted microscope. Uh, in this case, it's shown on a RAM, ASI RAM frame, and a very minimalist inverted microscope consisting of a motorized objective mover, a port for epi illumination, and a tube lens where a camera would be mounted. The inverted microscope is simply used for finding the region of interest in the sample. And we can mount the DI stem part of the system, which is everything up here, on any other inverted microscope, uh, including those made by other manufacturers. So the sample is held here in the XY stage. Um, use the inverted microscope to find the sample, and then the, the light sheet microscopy is all happening up above. So we, uh, the basic idea of a light sheet microscope is to illuminate just one plane of the sample at a time, and then by moving the position of that illumination plane through the sample, you collect a, a Z-stack, a series of images at different positions that then can be combined into a single 3D volume. So the, the dual part of our system is that we're doing that from two different views. First, we uh, would image with this, P, or this objective on the right, and second with the objective on the left. We end up getting one set of images like this, and then another set like this. Combined, they give a 3D volume with isotropic resolution. This avoids the normal problem of poor axial resolution. ASI's DI SPIM system combines the following features that aren't available together in any other commercial system. Well, first, we have conventional sample mounting, so is unlike uh, other commercial light sheet microscopes. Second, there's isotropic resolution, as I just explained, and it's usually about twice as good as confocal systems. Third, we have low photo bleaching because we only do illuminate uh, one plane of the sample at a time. So usually the light dose is less than 10% that of confocal. And finally, we achieve rapid frame rate up to 200 frames per second. All right. So now I'm going to tell you about the DI SPIM components. So we're going to start here at the scanner. This is what generates the light sheet. And the excitation beam simply comes in here on a fiber cable. And so this generates the light sheet. And the light sheet is then passed through this tube lens into the dichroic mirror right that sits inside this cube. And the excitation beam is reflected by the dichroic mirror down into this objective. Um, so the light sheet is generated by this objective, and then the objective on the right is focused on the illumination plane. And whatever uh, fluorescent light is emitted is collected by this objective passes through the dichroic mirror in this cube, and in this cube is reflected back to the camera on the right side. So that's, the, that's one of the two imaging paths. The other imaging path is simply a mirror image and is not populated here. You have a scanner on the right side uh, through the two objectives. The objective on the left would be used for imaging, and then you'd have a, a camera on the left side here. So two other things just to note is we have uh, two piezo objective movers here. So the piezo objective movers are used to keep the, the imaging objective in focus with the light sheet as it passes through the sample. And then there are two objectives, identical objectives. They need to be able to be co-focused. So we have customers using these 40x Nikon objectives or 10x objectives, other objectives could be used as long as they can be co-focused. But now I'm going to tell you a little bit about the scanner since it's a new component of our system. So the scanner takes a fiber input of light and turns it into a light sheet. So it contains a fast 2D galvo and we scan one of those 
axes very fast to form the light sheet, and then the other is used to, st uh, to scan the sheet through the sample. The Galva is fast enough for imaging at 200 frames per second. So here the scanner is scanning the whole field, and you can notice a dark area in the lower left corner. The beam can be effectively turned off by steering the beam to that corner, like this. And so that would be used when you're creating the light sheet with the other scanner. So to create the light sheet, we simply take the single beam that comes in and scan it back and forth very rapidly to form a sheet like this. Then the sheet is scanned through the sample using the other axis of the Galvo, like this. So I'm now going to tell you a little bit about our modular controller. This is a called our TIGER or TG1000 controller and it's needed for the DI SPIM system because there's simply so many things to control. In the DI SPIM system there's a total of 10 axes. The XY stage, the linear stages on the top and the bottom, the two piezo objective movers, and the two scanners that each have two axes. So uh, our conventional WizKid controller simply wasn't enough. So this is a modular controller, meaning that it's easy to just add a new card. If you add something else, say you wanted to add a filter wheel, then we can just add a new card, and it's all controlled by the same computer over the same USB serial interface. Uh, so the, the controller is controlled by, um, by these serial commands, and meaning it can be controlled in LabVIEW or by serial scripts. It can also be controlled in Micromanager. Uh, we have we've developed the device adapter so everything basically works in micromanager and as far as the di spin specific commands such as setting up the uh, the number of light sheets and all that it's also done over serial and is available in micromanager scripting right now and we're working on a micromanager plugin that will provide a graphical user interface for all of that. But uh, the coordination of, of the different DI SPIM uh, elements, like coordinating the light sheet with the piezo objective movers and the camera trigger, that all takes place in the controller. So the user simply has to specify how many light sheets, uh, the camera frame rate, things like that, and then tells the controller to go. And the, you know, the light sheet operation is taken care of automatically by the controller. But ASI can provide both the components for the DI SPIM or turnkey systems. For customers with their own light source, you just need to get the light onto a fiber so that it can go into the scanner. And the computer requirements are essentially determined by the cameras selected and the required frame rate. So we are making the DI SPIM. We have multiple customers using it in the field. Uh, but it's still in an early adopter phase of production right now, so we're still tweaking things based on customer feedback. And if customers have new requirements, we're happy to work with them to modify our system to fit their needs. Thank you for your interest in ASI's DI SPIM.